Now under the label, let me just go ahead and hop right back to username. What I want to do is I want to add that input section, that section where the user can type text. So go ahead and create the shell for that right now. Now what type of section or form element is this? Well, it's just a section where the user can type text. The class equals input, and that's just for styling purposes. Now, every each one of these elements is going to have an ID and a name. So the ID is equal to username, and the name is going to be equal to username. Now, what we're going to do is we only want to allow the user to type in 20 characters in here because we don't want them to have usernames of like 150 characters long. So go ahead and there's a there we go there's a property called max length that you could pass into XHTML and it pretty much if the user tries to type more than 20 characters then it's not going to type anymore so we give it a max length of 20 and that only allows the user like I said to type in 20 characters no more so now the only other thing I want to do is I want to add the hint now the hint if you remember whenever we were styling in CSS whenever you hover over a field it has the option of popping up a hint or not you can have a hint or you can't have it so for example username and passwords have hint but email doesn't have a hint and this is just you know a little tip that you can give the user in order to clear things up so let's go ahead and make it a paragraph and I'm gonna name the class hint that's what we styled it as and let me just go ahead and end my paragraph so I don't forget and the hint for this let's just say 20 characters maximum and we might as well tell them letters and numbers only I think that's uh, appropriate for usernames so there you go there is the very first field now let's go ahead and hop down to email now for email let's go ahead and just steal this baby right here now email is also pretty much the same input with the type is text the class is input now the ID and name instead of username it's going to be email and email now the max length let me just go ahead and set that as 80 right now to be honest I have no idea anyone with an email of longer than 80 but uh, if we find that some people are complaining because they have emails longer than 80 and they can't sign up we can just change that later on really simple so I actually don't want to add a hint for email because you know you don't want to say like letters and numbers only because it's pretty obvious that you know I don't know you really don't need a hint for email but the last thing that we do need to worry about is this password field now for this password field right here we already went ahead and we made the label so the next thing is the input section so let me go ahead right up to the username and steal their input and right under label input now check it out for password you actually don't want the type of text you actually want the type of password now whenever you do this and you type in your password it's gonna type little asterisks so like nobody sitting next to you can see what you're typing in so the class is of course input the ID and the name password password and for the password let me just go ahead and give it a max length of 20 as well and for the hint let me just go ahead and copy this hint because it's going to be kind of the same. Now the hint for the password field is 20 characters maximum. We won't say letters and numbers only because hey if you want to throw a dollar sign or a, you know an at sign or something in your password then go ahead and feel free. Now the last thing that we need to do and I should have done this before actually I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off my form before I add the last thing. Before I add that button, I just want to go ahead and put that last ending form tag. Now, of course, the last element that we need to add is that button, the button to submit the form. Now, we already styled a class called button, so we have to remember to use that whenever we use the form. Now, whenever you're working in a form and you want to add a button, you just go ahead and add an input, but the type is equal to submit. Now whenever you press this, HTML knows that this is the button to submit the form. Now we might as well give it a name equal to submit and an ID equal to 
submit. I always like to fill out a uh, name and ID, good housekeeping. Now, of course, the last thing I want to do, well, second to last thing, is I want to go ahead and set the class equal to button because whenever I do this, that's what's going to make the button look pretty. The default button really isn't that pretty, and we spent all that time, you know, styling the button, so might as well use it. And the last thing, and I for real mean it this time, is the value of your button. Now, the value of the button is basically the text that you want to appear on the button. So basically the text for this button is gonna say submit for the search button, it'll say search for the login button, it'll say login. Um, we could go ahead and make a register, but I don't know, submit just sounds a little bit better. So the let, actually, you know what? I think we're good. I mean, what we did is we went ahead and we created all the header and search code with one line. Then we added the image on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I probably have a couple errors somewhere in here, but I'll find that when I test it. So in the next tutorial, what we're gonna do is, now that we created a um, form, we need to go ahead and handle the information in the form. So that's where we have to look forward to in the next tutorial. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you then.